glad we serve a mighty God. Amen. He's creator of everything, ruler of everything, isn't he? Amen. Amen. Praise God. We're going to open with some announcements tonight. Uh, just a reminder, uh, Brother Foster's funeral will be here this Saturday. From viewing will be from 10 o'clock until 12 o'clock. And the funeral will begin at 12 o'clock. And then the, the burial service will take place in Attica. And then after that, we'll come back here for a dinner. So the dinner will probably be around 2 o'clock. Around 2 to, I mean, 3 o'clock. Sorry. I'll get it right. Around 3 o'clock. So please remember that. Come out and support Sister Donna and the family. We all love Brother Chuck, and we're going to miss him, ain't we? Amen. Amen. But how many knows he's in a better place? Amen. He's running down those streets of gold. He's probably around the throne right now, Amen. praising the Lord. So please remember Sister Don and the family in prayer. And then also tomorrow's Brother Skid's fun brother's funeral. It's in Rensselaer, Indiana. It's Stanky, fun Stanky Funeral Home at 12 o'clock tomorrow. So remember their family in prayer. Also, the t-shirts and the sweatshirts are for sale. We need your order forms in by the last Sunday in October. It's coming up quick, so if you'd like to purchase one of those, take an order form, fill it out, put your money with it, fold it in half, so that way we can turn the order form in with all your information on it. Also, we're going to start receiving hats, gloves, and blankets for, for needy uh, children. We're going to pass those out in uh, November the 18th, so next Sunday if you want to start bringing those in. And it, today it kind of feels like it's getting cool, doesn't it? So we're going to start needing those, so please remember that and start bringing those in. Also, the last Sunday night in October is our fifth Sunday sing. If you're interested in singing, see, please see Brother Nate. That way he can get you on the list and make sure that you're on there for the singing. And if you'd like to read something that night, sign up with Brother Nate as well. So please remember that. And then also our district convention will begin Thursday the 19th and Friday, that'll be 19th and 20th, Thursday and Friday, and the schedule of things is on the bulletin board. There'll be service on Thursday evening, and then Friday night will be the youth service. Everyone in the church is invited to come out to be a part of the service. So please remember those, all these announcements, all right? Let's stand tonight. Appreciate you being here, but we appreciate most of all the Lord being here. Thank God for what he did this morning, looking for greater things tonight. Amen. Got about five people said amen. Amen. All right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Lord, we praise you for another time and opportunity, Lord, just to come into your presence. Lord, we know this is the day that you have made. And God, we will rejoice and be glad in it. And Father, I pray for this service. God, every song we sing, every word that I speak, God, will bring glory and honor and praise unto you. Father, we ask, God, that your will be accomplished here tonight. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Everybody shout amen tonight. Amen. Let's worship the Lord as Brother Nate comes to lead us to worship. Pastor obeys the Lord. You know, I, you know, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm sure there are probably some pastors that would have just tried to cut that off because they had to get their sermon in. But he obeyed God, amen? amen. And people were blessed as a result. This first song is titled, Jesus Hold My Hand. It's out of the hymnal. And this thought came to me. Maybe you find it a little silly, but it's... Uh, the thought came to me, you know how sometimes if we have to hold somebody's hand, we get a little silly or funny, because maybe that person squeezes too hard, or maybe their hands are cold, or maybe their hands are sweaty, or maybe it's just it's the person of the opposite sex and we don't want to hold their hand. But aren't you glad that Jesus, he doesn't worry about any of that mess? He has that hand reached down, and all we have to do... Mm, is to just grab a hold of that head. Come on, brother. Jesus. Love him, Lord. Grab a hold of that hand tonight, church. While the blood is ri yep, running warm in your veins, grab a hold of this hand. Tomorrow, Is not promised. Jesus. Let's sing this song tonight, church. Just worship the Lord. Forget about everything. Forget about yourself. Let's just worship the Lord tonight, church. Let's worship. Jesus. As I travel through this pilgrim's land, there is no Help me do the 
time, if you hold on, heaven will pull for you. Amen. Just hold on to his hand tonight, church. I picked this song, uh, the second song out tonight, because I believe this was one of Brother Foster's favorite songs. The key is coming. Jesus. I know he, I've heard him mention that he loves singing this song. So I wanted, this, wanted us to sing this song tonight. The king is coming. He's coming, church. Jesus. Let's worship him tonight, church. We'll start off with the chorus. Jesus. He is coming.
watches as machines type pointless facts. All the planes bear off their forces. No one sits at the controls for the chorus again, church. The King is coming. The King is coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding. And now His face I see. The King is coming. The King Are you ready tonight, church? Give God some praise. Amen, amen. I like what Brother Rick said this morning about the second coming. His second coming is going to be all in glory, amen. And when he came the first time, very humble, born in the stable, those kind of things, he entered Jerusalem on a donkey. As Brother Rick said this morning, it won't be a donkey this time. The white horse, I mean, he's, he's coming in all his glory. It's be ready, be ready, be ready, be ready, be ready. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's sing this song before our pastor comes for prayer requests. Aren't you thankful for his grace? His amazing grace. The song says, How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Blind. Now I see. Jesus. Let's sing this song tonight, church. His amazing grace. Amazing grace. How sweet. Praise. 
God. Praise 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 God. I'm just glad tonight for the amazing grace of God. See, I don't know where you were when God found you or when God saved you. But when I was in high school, I was labeled a burnout, a stoner. But thank God for the amazing grace of God tonight. I can stand behind the pulpit and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because of His amazing grace. Amen. I am what I am today. Amen. I'm not a burnout anymore. I'm just in love with Jesus. Amen. Because of His amazing grace, we are who we are tonight. Amen. Let's see it one more time. I'm grateful tonight for what He's done for me. I'm grateful that He showed His amazing grace on me. Amen. Aren't you tonight? Hallelujah. Let's give Him the praise that He deserves. Amazing grace.
dwell in this temple right here. But he dwells right here in this temple. Amen. How many knows God ain't going to dwell in an unclean temple? Amen. we got to be pure. we got to be holy. Amen. Amen. We've got to be covered by the blood of Jesus that the Lord Amen. God Almighty can dwell inside this sanctuary. Amen. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I want to be that living sanctuary, that living testimony of what God has done in my life. Amen. Amen. Give him another hand clap of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. You can be seated tonight. receive the evening offering and tithes. If you have to give tonight, you give to the Lord. He will never fail to bless you tonight. Brother Bill, would you pray over the offering? You know, someone might say, you know, when, uh, when God calls one of his soldiers home, we're supposed to be happy, amen? So, you know, Brother Nate, why are you shedding any tears? Well, I believe when Jesus was uh, teaching on the mountainside, I believe in the Beatitudes, there's blessings in mourning, amen? So there's also comfort in mornings, because then in the morning we can have joy, amen? This, let's sing this song, it's titled, Jesus Will Make It All Right. I know it's all right, all right. I know Jesus will make it all right. Oh yes, it's all right, all right. Jesus will make it all right. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down thy weary one, lay down thy head upon thy breast. Oh yes, it's all right, all right. I know Jesus will make it all right. I know it's all right, all right. Jesus will make it all right. And I came to Jesus as I was. I was weary, worn, and sad. And I found in Him a resting place. And He has made me glad. Oh, yes, it's all right. All right. I know Jesus will make it all right. Oh, yes, it's all right, all right, Jesus will make it all right, don't you know it's all right? Jesus will make it. Sing that one more time, church. Oh, yes, it's all right. All right. Jesus will make it all right. Oh, I know it's all right. All right. Jesus will make it all right. Sister Esther is going to bless us this evening with a special. May God bless her. Amen.
it. The title is One Day I'll Awake. And we're going to a home, and um, one day we're going to wake in a brand new home. Amen. We anchor in Jesus. How many knows we're going to be able to stand? Amen. Praise God. If you have your Bibles tonight, I'd like you to turn to John chapter 20, and we're going to read verse number 27. John chapter 20, verse number 27.
don't know if you all notice it's a little bit brighter in here. I want to thank Brother Bill. Me and him changed 48 light bulbs that were out in here. So, <laughs> Which, this morning when those lights went out, I thought, uh oh, we did something wrong. Thank God they came back on. <laughs> John chapter 20, verse number 27. If you found that, say amen. If you don't have your Bible, it'll be on the screen. It says, Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord, my God. Tonight, I want to preach on the thought of scars. Scars. Let's pray and ask for God's help. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, God, for your presence, your power, God, that we feel here tonight. And, Father, I ask tonight for your help. God, help me to preach your word under the unction of the Holy Ghost, Father. Help me, God, to speak the words, God, that you want spoken. And Father, I pray, God, that you'd anoint me and use me and help me, God, to be your microphone to your people. Father, I pray you'd anoint every word that I say, anoint every ear to hear it, and every heart to receive it. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, and everybody say amen tonight. Tonight I want to preach on scars. The, scar, the word scar means a mark left behind by a healed wound, sore or burn. A mark left behind by a healed wound, a sore, or a burn. I want us to get a picture. I want you to understand what was happening here. Thomas was called Doubting Thomas. He didn't, he didn't believe that the Lord had risen, but he sees the Lord, and the, and the Lord tells him, just, just, just take your fingers and put it in the, in the side here, right where my scar is, or right in that place where they, where they, they thrust that spear into the Lord's uh, side. And, and Thomas reached in and he touched that scar. He touched that place in Jesus. And at that moment in time, he began to believe. It was a scar that was made there, amen, for you and I. It was a scar that was placed there as he hung on that cross. It was a wound that had been healed, amen, as they pierced his side, amen, with that scar as he hung on the cross. He hung on the cross, amen, that you and I could have life eternal, amen. Scars are a mark of, a, of something that has been healed and made whole. His body had been made whole. He had been resurrected. He was no longer the Son of, amen, man, but He was the Son of God. Amen. Jesus came, amen, upon this earth. He walked this earth for 33 and a half years as a man. But now He was the Son of God. He had arose from the grave. He was victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And He was standing before Thomas. And He said, Thrust thy finger into my side and touch the scar there in my body. Amen. We all probably have scars in our bodies, don't we? I have a scar on my leg that I got when I was 10 years old. Amen. And it's a scar that has been there for 38 years. But I can tell you exactly what happened at that moment in time. Amen. To bring that scar that's on my leg. It's not a big scar, it's a little scar, but it's still a scar. It's a mark on my body that I still can remember in my mind at the exact moment in time that what I was doing when this scar began to take place on my leg. It was a wound that had been made whole. Hey Amen. It was a cut that was in my leg. It was deep. It was a cut that was there, a wound that had taken place in my leg. But today, it's a scar. It's a reminder of something that was... Once a wound had now been made whole. Amen. We all have scars in our lives. We have scars on our bodies. You may have a mark on your arm, a scar on your hand. You may have a scar in your head. You may have a scar on your leg. Whatever it is and wherever it's at, when we look at that scar, we remember that there was once a wound there, but now it's not a wound anymore. It's been made whole. Amen. How many can say tonight, I got some scars on my body? I got some scars in my spirit. But thanks be to God, He's healed the wound, and now it's just a scar. Amen? Hallelujah. Give Him praise. 
Scars can prove who Jesus is. Thomas needed to touch his hand into the side of Jesus and see the scar that was there for him to know that's the Son of God. That's the, that's the one that I serve. Now some say, well, you should have had faith. You should have believed. It took the scar for Thomas to remember and to understand this is the Lord. And I believe sometimes the Lord allows things to happen in our lives that He can prove Himself to us. I mean, I don't know about you, but I got some scars in my body. I got some scars in my heart. I got some scars in my spirit. And every time I look at the scar, I can understand that Jesus Christ is still real. He's still a healer, and He can still heal wounds today. Amen. <laughs> scars can prove Jesus is who He says He is. I don't know about you, but I got some marks, some scars in my body. Some of you have had surgeries where you have cuts in your body and you have a scar there. And God has brought you through many surgeries. Some of you may have more than one scar from surgery. You may have had surgery after surgery. But when you look at that scar, you say, The Lord has brought me through the surgery. The Lord has healed the wound. It's no longer a wound anymore. It's become a scar. It's been made whole. I, I made it through the surgery. The Lord brought me through. And hopefully when you look at the scar, you can be reminded of what the Lord has done and how the Lord has brought you through, how the Lord has had His hand on you. Amen. The doctor may have performed it. Amen. But I believe God can direct the doctor's hands as they begin to do the surgery. Amen. We got scars in our body and I hope they remind you of who Jesus is. Amen. Remember, a scar is a healed wound. It's not a wound anymore. If it was still a wound, there would be no scar. Amen. We all have wounds. We all have scars in our bodies. Amen. I don't know about you, but I got a dark scar in my life. I told you a while ago they labeled me as a burnout. My teacher said to me, why do you come here? You're wasting our time. You're never going to amount to anything. Why are you even in our classroom? You're never going to be anything. Amen. But thank God tonight I can look back at that scar and say God had brought me out of that. And today I am what I am. Amen. The wound of sin that was upon my life. Amen. Jesus Christ came down. He washed away my sins. He healed the wound of my sins. He forgave me of who I was. And today I have a scar in my heart. It's black. It's dirty. It's no good. Amen. But thanks be to God, it's not a wound anymore. It's been made whole through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know what kind of scars you have. I don't know where you were at in your life when you got saved. But I know I was black. I was dirty. I was a no good, filthy, rotten sinner. I didn't deserve, amen, the grace of God. Amen. But thanks be to God, He shed His mercy and His grace upon me. Amen. He gave me opportunity. He gave me chances. Amen. But I refused and I walked away. And He still dealt with my heart. And He still forgave me of my sins. And I'm glad tonight that He has healed me of that wound of sin tonight, aren't you? Amen. Amen. Now just because you get saved doesn't mean you're never going to have any more scars. We all have the scar of sin. You may say, well, I've never done that. I've never done this. The Bible says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. I don't care if you've never smoked, you've never drank, you never cussed. Hey Amen. You're still a sinner. We all have to come through the cross. We all got to come through the blood of Jesus. Hey Amen. Whether you're drunk or whether you're just a good person. Hey Amen. Without Christ, you're going to spend eternity in hell. Hey Amen. We got to all come to the cross. We all got to come under the blood of Jesus. Hey Amen. We're all sinners saved by the grace of God. We all have that scar of sin on our hearts. It may be a dark scar. It may be a big scar. It may be a little scar. But whatever the scar is, let it remind you of who you were until you came to Jesus. Amen. Today, the wound of sin has been healed from our lives. And just because you get saved doesn't mean you're never going to receive any more wounds or you're never going to have any scars again. I don't know about you, but since I've been saved, there's been some things that's happened in my life that's brought wounds and scars into my life. 
But I can stand here tonight and tell you God has been faithful. Amen. God has never let a wound get so big that I died, that I'm still alive today. Amen. I've been through hell and high water. Amen. But I'm still going on for Jesus tonight. Amen. I'm still going to serve God. I may be cut. I may be pushed down. Amen. But I'm still going to raise up and lift up my hands unto Jesus. I may have scars all over my body. Amen. But I will walk down those streets of gold. I will make heaven my home. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for the scars. Thank God that I can look at my arm or whatever part of my body and know that God did it before. God can do it again. If God healed me of this, if God brought me through that, amen, God can do it again. Amen. Let your scars remind you of what the Lord has done. Let us never think it's what we have done. It's all about what God has done in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. I remember many years... Amen. Hallelujah. Struggling with the Lord. I remember being up and down, in and out. Amen. But I'm thankful tonight that I rode the altar until I got to the place where I'm in it to win it. I'm in it to get to heaven. Amen. Amen. There was one day I was in, one day I was out. There was one day I was up, one day I'm down. I still go up and I still go down. Amen. We're still going to have mountains to climb and valleys to walk through. Amen. But there are people tonight that are wishy-washy in their walk with God. We need to get in it to win it. We need to get in it to say, I will walk down those streets of gold. I'm not going to play church. I'm going to make heaven my home. Amen. I may have scars in my body. Amen. But I will walk down those streets of gold. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. I got some scars in my marriage. I didn't okay this with my wife. But we've been through things in our marriage. I'm sure some of you all got some things in your marriage. There was times we said we'd ready to just quit, give up, forget it. She couldn't live with me and I couldn't live with her. Just We were going to go our own way. There's a scar there, but that scar reminds us, hey man, God was able to restore and God was able to heal the wounds that had been placed there. Hey man, when the devil said quit, give up, hey man, God healed the wound and today we're together and this year we're going to celebrate 30 years together, amen. Yeah, we got scars. Yeah, we had some wounds, amen, but we know that God has kept us together, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Huh? Yeah, well, I'm telling you. Amen. I got scars in my life. You got scars? Anybody got scars? Amen. I remember being laid off six times. I remember not having no money. Amen. To buy no food. And I remember what it's like to have somebody knock at the door. Amen. With a sack full of groceries. Amen. Saying, hey, God told me to bring you this. Amen. There's a scar there to remind me. Amen. When you have need, God's faithful. Amen. When you don't know what to do. Amen. Just trust God. There's a scar there to remind you. Amen. God did it before. Amen. God did it for again. If God did it for Brother Chris, amen. God can do it for you. Amen. Let your scars be a testimony. Look at what the Lord has done. Amen. Praise God. Got a cut here, got a cut there. I got a scar here, I got a scar there. I don't know about you, but my elbows are all cut up. My knees are all bruised. Amen, for running for the Lord and falling down. Amen, but thank God every time I fell down, He was there. Amen, to pick me up. Amen, every time that I fell and I faltered along the way, He's been faithful. He's never left me. He's always been there. Amen, I may have scars on my elbow. I may have scars on my knees. Amen, but I can look at those scars and say, God picked me up when I fell flat on my face. Amen. None of y'all ever fell, have you? I remember, uh, this was one night we'd been stupid. My grandma and grandpa lived out by the gravel pits. We were out drinking, being stupid. We got up there on the sand hill. They drove them big old craters up the, anyway, I don't know where I'm going, but. We got up there on that big sand hill. We were drinking, being silly and stupid. And we got the big idea. We're going to run down that sand hill. 
And I got running down that sand hill. It was so steep. I was running so hard. I ran right into the ground. I mean, I just ran straight into the ground, skinned my knees up, bruised up my elbows. I mean, I just literally ran straight into the ground. I couldn't stop because I got going so fast. It was such a straight, decline, or straight incline. Hey Amen. Sometimes in life, we may be running, doing the best that we think we can. Hey Amen. And all of a sudden, you just feel like you ran into the ground. You may feel like I just hit a wall. Hey Amen. But how many knows we need to get up from the wall or get up from the ground and say, I'm going to keep on running. My knees may be scarred. My elbows may be bruised. Hey Amen. But I'm going to keep running for Jesus. Hey Amen. Hallelujah. Give Him praise tonight. Scars. We don't like to talk about scars. Scars can be painful. Hey Amen. You may have scars of somebody hurting you. You may have scars of somebody talking about you. You may have scars of somebody physically abusing you. Hey Amen. But let those be a testimony of how God has brought you through. Hey Amen. Don't let the devil defeat you. Don't let the devil, hey Amen, remind you of how bad it was. You tell the devil it's going to get better and I'm going to keep serving Jesus. Hey Amen. We all got scars of trials and tests, don't we? Hey Amen. You all been through some tests, ain't you? Hey Amen. If you haven't, I challenge you tonight. Hey Amen. If you've been saved any time at all, can I tell you the devil's going to come against you? He's going to try to get you to go back. He's going to try to get you to go the other way. We all have trials. We all have tests. We all have things the devil tries to throw our ways. And let those be reminders. If God did it before, amen, God can do it again. There is no test and there is no trial that the devil can defeat you with if you hold to Jesus. Amen. I know they may get tough. They may get hard. And you may feel like giving up and giving in. Can I tell you, that's the easy way out. But that's still... Not the good way out. I don't know how people make it without the Lord. A lot of people, trouble comes, tests and trials come, they shake their fist at God and blame God. How many knows we ought to be running to God, asking God for help, instead of blaming God and running away from God? People quit church. People stay home. Hey Amen. Because they got problems in their homes. they got problems in their lives. Hey Amen. We ought to be here knocking the doors down, saying, I need to get a hold of God. Hey Amen. i got a trial. i got a test. I want to get through it. Amen? Too many times we run the other way. We've got scars, trials, and tests. We have all had them, haven't we? How many can raise your hand tonight and say, God's brought you through them all? Huh? Anybody in here let, let the devil run you over? I've been ran over, but I got up in the name of the Lord because I thought I was bigger than what I was. How many knows we're no match for the devil in ourselves? Amen? But greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. We've got to have Jesus in us. Hey Amen. We've got to live close to him. Amen. Praise God. Scars in our, in our bodies. Some may have scars of sickness. Some of you may have scars of sickness and how God has brought you through sicknesses. Amen. We've all had things in our lives. Some of you have been sick. Some of you have had big surgeries, major surgeries. But you've got a scar there, and now you're better. You're doing good. Hey Amen. It's a scar to remind you if God brought you through this sickness, He can bring you through the next sickness may come along. We've got scars in our hearts. Hey Amen. Maybe there's hurt in our hearts. Maybe there's anger and bitterness in our hearts. Hey Amen. We've got scars in there. Let those scars, hey Amen, be made whole. See, a scar is not a wound anymore. A scar is a place where Jesus has came in and healed the wound. Hey Amen. The wound's not there anymore. It's been made whole. Yeah, there's a mark there. There's a place in our heart, amen, where somebody has heard us, somebody has talked about us, somebody has brought us down. It's a scar now, so let the devil know it's not a wound anymore, because he'll try to remind you. He'll try to keep bringing it back into your mind to tell you, remember what they said, remember what they did. You tell the devil it's under the blood. It's now a scar. It's not a wound anymore, amen. God can heal every wound in our hearts. Can I tell you tonight, people are mean. People will hurt you. People will talk about you. Amen. But we're not in it for people. We're in it for Jesus, aren't we? Amen. Let them talk. Amen. Let them talk because they're going to talk. Amen. They hurt sometimes. Amen. I've been hurt in church. Did you? Anybody else? 
I've been hurt by pastors. I've been hurt by church people. Amen. There's a scar there. But you know what? God healed the wound. God brought me through it. Amen. The scar is there to remind you. You can't put your faith and your trust in people. You've got to put your faith and trust in God because people will fail you. People will let you down. People will hurt you. Amen. But God will never fail you. God will never hurt you. God will see you through. Amen. And then lastly tonight, don't hide your scars. Don't hide your scars. People spend a lot of money to get their scars removed, and I'm not talking about those kind of scars. Be proud of what God's done in your life. I'm thankful I'm not a burnout no more. I don't know why I'm saying burnout. That's what you do with your tires, but they used to call me a burnout. Anyway, there's a scar there. People say, I remember when you used to. Hey, Amen, that's a scar that I can say now I don't do that no more. I got something better. Amen. Don't be ashamed of your scars. Don't try to hide your scars. Amen. Let your scars be a testimony. Hey, God has brought me through this. God has made me who I am today. Because of my scars, I'm a better person. Because of my scars, I have victory tonight. Because God has healed the wounds in my life. Amen. Don't hide your scars tonight. Be proud of what the Lord has done. Amen. We sing that song, Look What the Lord Has Done. Look at your scars tonight. Remember what God's done. I can look at my leg and remember 38 years ago when I fell under that fence, that barbed wire fence, and I ripped my leg open. Amen? But that's nothing. I'm talking about the inward scars, the scars in your hearts, the scars that God's healed, the wounds that have been placed by people or the devil. Amen? And God has healed those scars. Let's be proud of what God's done in our lives. Don't hide them. Testify and say, look what God's done. God did this for me. God can do that for you. Amen. He's no respecter of people tonight. Let's stand as the musicians, singers come. Scars. We all got them, don't we? Thank God tonight that He took the biggest scar. The biggest scar that I had was sin. Biggest scar that I could ever be made whole was the scar of sin. I said it before and I said it again. We've all sinned and we've all come short of the glory of God. Thank God He forgives. Amen. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. You may be here tonight as we bow our heads and close our eyes. You may be walking in sin and rebellion from God right now. You don't have to leave here walking in sin and disobedience to God. You can leave here with the wound of sin healed from your body tonight. If you'll make a step of faith, come to this altar. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need to get things right with you. If you're here tonight and you're not, you don't have a relationship with God, you don't have a relationship with Christ, these altars are open for you tonight. Would you come? Kneel down and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Will you please forgive me of my sins? The Bible says if we'll confess our sins... He's faithful and just to forgive us. If you're here tonight, you're away from God. You're walking in sin and rebellion against God. Tonight, let God heal that wound. Let God make your sin a scar. That He can say, your wound has been healed. Or maybe you're here tonight, you got some wounds that have not become scars yet. Maybe there's some hurts. There's some places in your lives that are still wounded. And God wants to make them into scars tonight. He wants to heal your wound. If you're here tonight, you got wounds in your heart. Would you come? The altars are open. That don't mean you're a backslider. You're just saying, God, I need some healing in my hurts. Maybe someone said something. Maybe someone's done something to you that's brought hurt and pain into your life. Or maybe you've done something yourself to cause pain. And you've brought it on yourself tonight. But God's here to forgive you. God's here to heal the wound and make it a scar. If you're here tonight, you need prayer, come. The altars are open. If you don't want to get out of your seat, let's all find us the place of prayer. Ask God to heal our wounds tonight. And let our scars be a testimony of what He's done in our lives. Can we all find us a place of prayer? Come around the altars, kneel by your seat.
Appreciate the Lord being with us, amen. Brother Flick, will you dismiss us in prayer tonight, brother?